A powerful military led by an authoritarian regime attacks a much smaller country. What will the United States do? Well, in the case of Ukraine, DC sent military and humanitarian aid. But what about Taiwan? Will the US go to war to protect the island nation from a Chinese invasion? Probably not. And here's why. First, the strategic ambiguity policy around how far the United States is willing to go to protect Taiwan is bad news for the island if conflict were to break out. Second, the United States still publicly acknowledges Taiwan as part of China and is controlled by Beijing due to its one-China policy. Third, the economic impact of the war with China would be devastating for the United States. Fourth, the military losses and casualties in an armed conflict against the People's Liberation Army would be immense. Fifth, Taiwan just isn't as important to the United States as it is for China. For all these reasons and several others, the US most likely would not join the fight if China attacks Taiwan. We'll analyze each one of these key points soon, but first, let's examine why we're even discussing the scenario and what has led up to this moment. We'll use facts and data to determine what the US would do if China ever invaded Taiwan to better understand why the US talks a big game but probably isn't willing to back it up with force. Ever since the Republic of China's government was forced to flee to Taiwan in 1949 after losing the civil war to the Chinese Communist Party, Beijing has tried to reincorporate the island back under its control. What China has been doing for decades now is using gray zone tactics to weaken Taiwan and push any allies or support they might be gathering away from Taipei. This has been done using military exercises, scare tactics such as sending ships and planes into Taiwan's waters and airspace, and sanctions against any country that has formal diplomatic ties with Taiwan. On top of these tactics, Beijing has launched misinformation campaigns and cyber warfare attacks against the island that lies 100 miles off its eastern shore. As of right now, it seems very unlikely that there is any immediate invasion planned. For one thing, China would need to amass an enormous invasion force, which would be clearly spotted by surveillance in the area and intelligence gathering missions. Also, Beijing knows that at this point in time, the military losses they would suffer during an invasion would be devastating. This does not mean China won't invade in the future or attack Taiwan using other means. In fact, President Xi Jinping has told his military leaders to prepare for a war with Taiwan by 2027. Other sources claim China could be preparing to invade as soon as 2025. However, nothing is certain and the world is constantly changing. What is clear, however, is that China will not easily give up on its claim to Taiwan. Technically, every country in the world, except for 13 nations, formally acknowledges that Taiwan is a part of China, including the United States. Most dealings conducted with the government of Taipei are done unofficially or in secret, as any formal declaration would result in China severing its diplomatic ties, which also includes economic deals it has with the offending country. This would be devastating for any nation, as China has a GDP close to $18 trillion and its economy is expected to grow by 5.1% in 2023. Needless to say, the situation in the Taiwan Strait is constantly a cause for concern, and there is little doubt that at some point in the future China will try to officially reincorporate Taiwan under its control. The growing conflict in the region has led President Biden to claim that the US will come to Taiwan's defense if it's ever invaded. However, this is not the official policy of the United States. Every time Biden says the US will defend Taiwan, China conducts a military exercise in the Taiwan Strait or publicly voices its displeasure. But here's the thing, whenever President Biden says the US will defend Taiwan, other officials in the government either contradict him or try to sweep his statements under the rug. Because even if Biden wants to defend Taiwan using the US military, he's not the only one who must sign off on such actions. Yet, China refuses to sit idly by as Biden makes such remarks. Instead, Beijing releases warnings and threats whenever China feels threatened by the US president's statements. For example, recently, the deputy director of the Foreign Ministry Information Department of China, Wang Wenbin, released a statement saying, We urge the US to strictly abide by the One China Principle and the three Sino-US joint communiques, be cautious in its words and deeds on the Taiwan issue, and refrain from sending any false signals to Taiwan independent separatist forces, or it will seriously damage the Sino-US relations and peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait, which publicly declared that if Biden continued to claim the US would defend Taiwan, there would be consequences. We're going to analyze why the US would likely not go to war over an invasion of Taiwan in a little bit, but first it's important to discuss what the US's current stance on Taiwan actually is. The official doctrine that the United States uses in the region is a one-China policy. It was first stated in the Shanghai Communique of 1972 and declares the United States acknowledges that all Chinese on either side of the Taiwan Strait maintain there is but one China and that Taiwan is a part of China. Therefore, no official diplomatic relationship exists between the United States and Taipei, as this would be seen as a breach of the one-China policy. 
This has maintained the status quo in the region for decades, albeit only tenuously. The United States also takes a strategically ambiguous stance when discussing how far it's willing to go to protect Taiwan. What this means is that the US policy around protecting the island is vague at best, and this has been done on purpose. DC wants Beijing to believe that it's willing to take serious actions if the Chinese military ever attack the island, but the US government won't officially declare its intentions because they don't want to be forced into a war. Instead, the US is playing poker. It makes claims of support and sends weapons to Taiwan to aid its own defense, but the US is most likely bluffing whenever it says it'll fight a war to protect Taiwan. This strategic ambiguity has been the norm for the US and the Taiwan Strait, and for many decades has kept China at bay. However, as the Chinese military modernizes and becomes more powerful, the United States might have to change its official stance to a more blatant declaration of protection for Taiwan or have Beijing call them on their bluff. Every time President Biden says the US will protect Taiwan, his staff and foreign policy officials go into damage control mode. Biden has made such declarations no fewer than four different times. Spokespeople from the White House, the State Department, and the Pentagon contradict the president when this happens and reaffirm to the world, and in particular Beijing, that the president's words do not change the country's official stance in the Taiwan Strait. The White House press secretary has even had to tell reporters the president was not announcing any change to our policy, nor has he made a decision to change our policy. There is no change in our policy. Just to make sure everyone other than the president apparently is on the same page. The fear is that if the US takes a more solidified stance on how far it's willing to go to protect Taiwan, Beijing might see this as the US stepping away from its One China policy. This could force China to take drastic actions and seize Taiwan before such a policy change could take effect, thus resulting in the very invasion the US is trying to avoid. There is no doubt that it's a difficult situation for everyone involved. Interestingly, this isn't the first time the US government had to reaffirm its stance after a president made provocative remarks about Taiwan. In 2001, President George W. Bush told news reporters the U.S. would come to Taiwan's defense if it were to be attacked. When asked by a reporter, with the full force of the American military, Bush responded, whatever it took to help Taiwan defend herself. Sounds awfully familiar to what Biden has been saying recently when asked the same types of questions. The irony is, when Bush made those remarks, Joe Biden was the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. He condemned Bush's words in an editorial, in which he said, in this case, his inattention to detail, referring to Bush, has damaged U.S. credibility with our allies and sown confusion throughout the Pacific Rim. Now Biden is making the same proclamations, and although things have changed over the last two decades, government officials are still trying to rein in what the president says about Taiwan's defense. Then again, maybe this is all part of a big game. By having the US president state that the US military would come to the aid of Taiwan if it were attacked, and other voices in the US government claiming they still follow a one China policy, the United States is making their stance even more ambiguous. They're threatening military action without making any real commitment. Perhaps this is just to make Beijing think twice before considering an invasion of Taiwan. Or maybe there is just confusion and disagreement in the United States government. Either way, it doesn't send a clear message, which kind of leaves the door open for the US to change its stance or leave its options open in the future. So, perhaps the back and forth rhetoric on whether the US would defend Taiwan from a Chinese invasion is just meant to throw Beijing off balance. The thought process might be if China doesn't know what the US would do, it might stand down or reconsider any aggressive action. This could be because the United States not only doesn't want to go to war with China over Taiwan, but it actually won't. We're now getting into the reasons why the US won't fight alongside Taiwan, which is a big problem for Taipei, as it doesn't seem like Beijing really cares about mixed messages coming out of DC. Some experts theorize that regardless of the US's actual stance, Beijing calculates the risks and rewards of an invasion of Taiwan independently. It's all a numbers game. When China thinks it's strong enough to successfully attack Taiwan and sustain an appropriate amount of losses, it will launch its invasion. The other side of this is that Beijing is also taking into account what the US will do regardless of what the president says. As things stand right now, it does not seem like China is preparing to attack but that could change in the future when all the pieces fall into place. There's no way of knowing exactly how China would go about attacking Taiwan, but war games and models by experts suggest it'll start with a naval blockade. China does not have the strongest navy in the world, but it does have the most ships at around 730 vessels, and every year the Chinese military industrial complex is updating old vessels and building better ones. To put this into perspective, the United States has approximately 484 active naval vessels. At the rate at which China is growing in power and influence due to its massive economy and willingness to trade with and invest in any government that it sees as being beneficial down the road, it's only a matter of time before China is in a position where it feels like an attack on Taiwan will be successful. 
What is important about a blockade scenario is that China will be able to hurt the economy and the ability of Taiwan to receive aid without launching an all-out invasion that would end up being incredibly costly. The United States has recently earmarked $10 billion worth of military spending for Taiwan, so unless the US is willing to blow its way through the blockade, any aid they send would not reach the island. The reason that a full-scale invasion isn't likely in the cards at the moment is that even though China would likely be able to capture Taiwan, the cost to their military would be immense. A blockade prevents these kinds of losses while greatly weakening the island. Using a portion of its 78 submarines, 100-plus warships, and two aircraft carriers, China could successfully keep merchant ships from reaching Taiwan's ports. This would be devastating as everything from food to energy resources need to be brought to the island. Taiwan is not self-sufficient, so all China would have to do is wait until the people of the island were suffering enough to force their government to surrender. Now, this is all hypothetically happening without immediate and swift intervention by the US, but as we're about to explain, there's a good chance the US won't get involved if it would lead to an armed conflict. Sending military aid to Ukraine, where much of the country's borders are free of Russian soldiers, is one thing. Getting aid to Taiwan, when China has the entire island surrounded by naval vessels, is a totally different ballgame. Even if the US wanted to send $30 billion worth of aid to Taiwan, which is how much the US has sent to Ukraine, it just wouldn't be logistically possible in the same way. Yes, there would be ways the US could get around the blockade, but it could risk a war erupting between China and the US, which both sides want to avoid. Don't get us wrong, there are many repercussions such as sanctions, blockades of their own, and diplomatic pressures that the US would enact if China blockaded or attacked Taiwan, but going to war is likely not one of the main options for DC no matter how many times President Biden says it. At the Infographics Show, we have covered China's plans and the strengths of the US military extensively, but this video is about the reasons the US will not go to war over Taiwan, so let's get to it. Both China and the US know that in a war between the two nations, the US has the upper hand. However, China has been working around the clock for decades to even the playing field. And although the Chinese military is not as strong as the United States, the balance of power is slowly shifting in the region. If China can continue to grow its economy, military, and influence, it might be able to bide its time until the US is drawn into a different conflict, at which point China might be powerful enough to take advantage of the situation and launch its attack. However, right now, this is not the case. That's why China's focusing on improving its self-sufficiency and solidifying trade deals that will help continue its economic growth. The idea is that if China can become more self-reliant and stockpile the resources it needs to fight a war, then if the US does blockade its trade routes or cuts China off from the rest of the world, it will be able to continue pumping out military equipment and feed their 1.412 billion citizens until the conflict is over. If nothing else, the leadership of China is nowhere near as reckless as that of Russia. The Chinese government has always been playing the long game, and they're not about to jump the gun with Taiwan. China doesn't need Taiwan to grow its power and influence further, but it does want Taiwan. What this means is that the Chinese government will not launch any type of attack until they're confident they can weather the storm of sanctions and economic actions taken against them by the United States and the West. Another part of this plan likely has to do with China's military capabilities, and Beijing is clearly not ready to go to war with the US at this time. However, the same can be said about the US itself, which is why if China does attack Taiwan, the United States will not be directly stepping in. So now let's do some analysis. The first reason the US will not go to war with China over Taiwan is because of the ambiguous strategic policy it's taken for decades. Besides not wanting to hurt trade relations with China, which we'll talk about in a bit, one of the reasons that the US has never taken a more concrete stance around its willingness to defend Taiwan is because it would force them to make good on the promise if China did invade. Since the US government will not outright declare Taiwan under its protection, it might mean that DC has no plans to offer actual military support in the event of an invasion. There is even a battle going on between some officials in Washington over breaking the United States' strategic ambiguity policy for a more aggressive stance, but the fact that no changes have yet been made is a good indicator that there are enough people in DC that don't want to go to war over the island, and if the majority of policymakers are against going to war, then the United States will not use force to protect Taiwan. The reason for keeping its strategic ambiguity policy is so the US can talk a big game, sell Taiwan weapons for its own defense, and still trade with China. But it also allows the US to not be forced into a war if China ever did attack the island. And that last part is key. What strategic ambiguity over Taiwan signals to China and the rest of the world is that the United States does not see the island as important as its trade and economic relationships with Beijing. And this very fact means the US will not provide military support for Taiwan. 
The second indicator that the US likely won't go to war with China over Taiwan is that it still has its one China policy. The importance of this cannot be understated. There is legally no grounds for the US to get involved in a conflict between Taiwan and China because it officially declares that Taiwan is a part of China. This is why the conflict in the Taiwan Strait is so murky. The US says it'll help Taiwan protect itself and that it's willing to do unofficial business with Taiwan. But since the One China policy states the United States agrees Taiwan is under Beijing's control, the whole situation becomes complicated, to the point that what the US is saying about defending Taiwan is almost meaningless. If we strip away all the jargon and diplomatic tiptoeing around, what is really happening is that the United States wants to keep China in check, but it's not willing to put its current trade deals with Beijing in jeopardy. Whether DC wants to admit it or not, the US relies heavily on Chinese manufacturing, labor, and exports, as well as massively benefiting from Chinese imports of American goods and resources. It can't be denied that Taiwan also provides the United States with vital imports like semiconductors and microchips. But as we'll show, the $106 billion in trade between Taiwan and the US is nowhere near the amount done between the US and China. This is why the United States has continued to adhere to its One China policy, even if it's only for show. And the very fact that the US refuses to formally acknowledge Taiwan as a sovereign nation makes it very unlikely that it'll go to war to protect Taiwan. It's much more likely the United States will enact sanctions against China and send military aid similar to what it's doing in Ukraine. The US might also call on its allies in the region to help send support to Taiwan, but China's massive influence even over US allies might mean that Taiwan will have to fight for its sovereignty alone. This brings us to the third and one of the biggest reasons the United States will not provide military support if China tries to invade Taiwan. Money. As mentioned, the United States does a huge amount of trade with China. In fact, China and the US are each other's overall largest trading partners. It would seem to reason that no government would want to go to war with the country they rely on most heavily for economic growth. That being said, this is a two-way street. China doesn't want to go to war with the US, but the US also doesn't want to go to war with China, because it would mean they would need to stop trading with one another. It would be very hard to continue trade with the country you are waging war against, which is why it doesn't happen. Trade between China and the United States reached an all-time high in 2022, and China provides the United States with more imports than any other nation in the world. In fact, in 2021, US imports from China reached $506.4 billion. 16.5% increase from the previous year. This resulted in a $355.3 billion trade deficit with China, meaning that the United States is relying more heavily on China than the other way around. This is not to say that the Chinese economy doesn't also rely on the US because it very much does. Here's what it comes down to. If China and the United States went to war, both economies would be in big trouble. There would also be a global economic meltdown. Every major market would plunge and a global recession would likely occur. Is protecting an island that the United States refuses to acknowledge as being a sovereign nation worth the economic hardship? Most policymakers in DC don't believe so, which is why it's highly unlikely that the United States would go to war with China over Taiwan. The reality is, both China and the United States know there is no winner if they go to war. That's why the President of the United States might posture like he's willing to use military force against China, but the government and stakeholders in the US economy are very much aware they cannot let this happen. And since money talks, the chances of the United States using its military to combat a Chinese blockade or an invasion of Taiwan are highly unlikely. Then there is the cost of war in terms of resources, military assets, and lives. The fourth reason the US won't go to war over Taiwan is that it's not clear whether it's a war the US could definitively win. We're not saying the United States military can't defeat China in the majority of conflicts. What we are saying is that the cost would be so great, just like in Vietnam or Afghanistan, that the US would end up either not finishing what it started or coming to an agreement where no one is happy. When considering whether to defend Taiwan using military actions, the United States government also needs to consider what that means for the US military and US citizens as a whole. It's one thing to say the United States is willing to defend Taiwan. It's a very different thing to put your defense into action. Logistically, fighting a war on the other side of the Pacific Ocean would put every aspect of the US military to the test. This would not be a war against an unorganized army of guerrilla fighters in the jungle or the desert. This would be a full-scale war that would require the entire might of the US military. 
It would be a very different war than the US fought in Vietnam or in the Middle East. This battle would be more on the scale of fighting Japan during World War II, but with much more advanced weapons and against a much larger military. China has 1,200 fighter jets, 300 intercontinental ballistic missiles, and 2 million active military personnel. The US would need to rely heavily on its 11 aircraft carriers, 1,900 fighter jets, and thousands of missiles to fight a war over Taiwan. Both sides have nukes, but neither country would be willing to escalate the conflict to a nuclear war. However, the same cannot be said of China's allies in North Korea. Putting aside the fact that a war between the US and China would be devastating for each nation's economy and the world as a whole, there's a very real possibility hundreds of thousands or even millions of lives could be lost. Now, we're under no illusion that a war between China and the United States would happen in isolation. There would be allies on both sides, but at this moment in time, it's improbable the US would be willing to accept the massive loss of life and destruction of military assets as a result of a war fought over Taiwan. To be clear, we are not saying that the United States and its allies would not win a war against China. They almost certainly would. What we're arguing is that each side would sustain heavy losses, and the United States is not willing to realize those losses, and therefore would not choose to go to war against China. China's military has become formidable over the years, and it continues to grow in strength and numbers. It would not be an easy war for anyone to win, and it's much more likely that the United States and its allies would condemn an attack on Taiwan, enact massive sanctions, and use its military assets to blockade China rather than directly go to war with the People's Liberation Army. In war game scenarios conducted by researchers, it's been determined that if the United States got involved in a conflict with China over Taiwan, Taiwan would most likely end up remaining under Taipei's control. However, the US would lose hundreds of aircraft and ships in the process. In the first month of fighting over Taiwan, the US could lose close to 1,000 aircraft. There's also a major concern that the US would be pulled away from the conflict if another major military event happened somewhere else in the world, which would leave Taiwan on its own. Out of the 24 war game simulations conducted, 18 resulted in very unfavorable outcomes for Taiwan and the United States. They did not lose the war, but both were in rough shape after the conflict ended. What all this means is that Taiwan has to be incredibly important to the United States in order for them to go to war to protect the island. Unfortunately, Taiwan isn't just as important as US economic interests and American lives. Supporting the people of Taiwan in their battle to remain free of the oppressive regime in China is crucial, but the US probably doesn't see it as being as important as staying out of a war with China. This leads us to a fifth reason that the United States will not go to war for Taiwan. Statistically, the island nation is not important enough to warrant military intervention. In a perfect world, everyone would rally around democracy and the sovereignty of a people who didn't want to be crushed under a foreign aggressor. But that is not the world we live in. In the context of keeping World War III from happening or keeping Taiwan from being invaded, the United States will always choose to avoid World War III. And to be fair, the US doesn't have the best track record when it comes to protecting a nation or its people from an oppressive regime. In Vietnam, the US pulled out and left the region in complete chaos. In Afghanistan, the United States left after 20 years and only around three months after leaving, the Taliban took over the government. If the United States got involved in a conflict between China and Taiwan, its track record would indicate there would be fighting and bloodshed, but in the end, the US military would pull out for one reason or another and leave Taiwan in a worse situation than it started. Now, there's no way to know exactly what would happen in the scenario, but many in the US government are not willing to fight another prolonged war just to see its efforts overturned, just as we saw after the evacuation of troops from Afghanistan. Then there's the fact that although more Americans than ever support sending troops to Taiwan, if it's ever invaded by China, the country is still divided, with only about 52% of the US population supporting the decision. And as we know from other conflicts, once a war starts and soldiers start coming home in body bags, public opinion quickly shifts. When the war in Afghanistan started, 69% of Americans said it was the right decision to send troops. Toward the end of the conflict, this number had plunged to close to 40%. War is not popular unless there's a very clear evil being fought against. Elected officials know this, and many have these statistics in the backs of their minds when making decisions about how much support to provide to Taiwan or any other country that's at war. The most unfortunate part of this scenario for Taiwan is that it is much more important to China than it is to the US. Beijing has been talking about reunifying with Taiwan ever since the People's Republic of China came into existence in 1949. The island is about 100 miles away from the coast of China, while it's approximately 7,000 miles from the US. The United States is putting up a fight because it doesn't want China to have control of the most important semiconductor manufacturing country in the world. The US is also concerned about allowing China to become more dominant in the region than it already is. 
However, unlike the United States, the overwhelming majority of Chinese citizens want to go to war with Taiwan and reincorporate it into China's borders. The fact of the matter is that China just wants it more. The United States will not go to war for Taiwan unless there's some unforeseen circumstance that drags them into the conflict. If the US was serious about protecting Taiwan, then would have a formal alliance with Taipei as it does with Japan and South Korea. The United States has made a solid commitment to defend these two nations, and it absolutely would if they were ever attacked. If the United States was going to defend Taiwan, it could make the same formal commitment. Since this hasn't happened, it doesn't seem as if the US will fight for Taiwan at this time. It should also be mentioned that when Russia invaded Ukraine, the United States made it very clear it would not be sending troops or fight in the war. Yes, the US has sent tons of aid, but it was clear from the start that Ukraine was never going to be defended by the United States military itself. Therefore, it stands to reason that Taiwan, which is not an entirely different situation than Ukraine, would also not be defended by the US military. There are, of course, differences between the two countries, but even those differences make things look bad for Taiwan. For example, Ukraine was a sovereign nation that the US recognized, and when it was invaded by Russia, it did not cause the US to go to war. Taiwan is not acknowledged as a sovereign nation by the US. We said it once and we'll say it again, because of the United States' one China policy, technically the US government's stance on Taiwan is that it is in fact a part of China. Therefore, it would stand to reason that Ukraine has a much better shot at receiving US military support than Taiwan does. Another very important fact is that the United States does not need to go to war with China to severely hurt the country if it attacks Taiwan. China might have the largest navy in the world, but the US has the most powerful navy by far. A large number of its 11 aircraft carriers, 92 destroyers, and 68 submarines would be deployed to major shipping lanes and ports around the world. Chinese trading vessels would be cut off from the country, and the Chinese economy would slowly begin to crumble. China still relies heavily on trade to procure much of its raw materials, energy resources, and food. In fact, China imports 508.28 million tons, or about 10.17 million barrels of oil per day. Therefore, instead of going to war, the United States Navy would be more effective at bringing China to its knees by disrupting its economy. This brings us to what the United States should do in the future. If it's serious about protecting Taiwan, the US government needs to take a firmer stance and declare its intentions in no uncertain terms. This could act as more of a deterrent than strategic ambiguity, but it also means the US would need to back up its policies by going to war if necessary. Another option is to outline how far the US would be willing to go in order to punish China for invading Taiwan, even if war isn't on the table. For example, make it clear what sanctions, embargoes, or actions such as blockades would be enacted if China attacked Taiwan. This is known as integrated deterrence, as there are planned and clear consequences for a foreign nation that breaks the status quo. The proclamations by the US president to defend Taiwan using military actions are little more than empty promises. Whether this is part of the strategic ambiguity stance that the US has taken in the Taiwan Strait, or the fact that the different levels of government are not on the same page, the result is still the same. If China attacked Taiwan, the US would respond, but it would most likely not go to war to protect the island. There would be military aid packages, financial support, and repercussions passed against China. However, it does not seem likely that the US would start World War III to defend a nation that it does not even formally recognize. Now watch Could Taiwan Hold Off a Chinese Invasion? Or check out why China will never be a global superpower.